and thank you, Sister Mary Lou. Merry Christmas to everyone here this morning. Amen. Merry Christmas to those who are listening uh, to today's message on Facebook Live at this time. It is a time of great rejoicing in, in, the, in the palace where a prince has just been born. Near the throne, there's a lively discussion, brothers and sisters, in, in this story going on as the king's advisors are making their suggestions concerning the best way to announce this wonderful news. They have suggested some elaborate ways, amen, to publicize and celebrate this great event. All but one have expressed their opinions, and now the king turns to him and asks, How about you? Do you have any ideas? What do you suggest? Well, came the reply, I think we should send a messenger out at night in the fields to tell some shepherds about it. What a strange idea, wasn't it? And yet, that was God's way of announcing Jesus' birth. God's ways are certainly not our ways, are they? Amen? Listen. As I read those familiar words in the second chapter of Luke, beginning with verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Amen. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, a bring. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Praise God. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. You see, somehow, when we hear about shepherds, coming to the manger and seeing the Christ child, it makes us feel warm inside, doesn't it? It always did for me. Every time I hear these scriptures, which are very, uh, very uh, familiar, it always gives me, gives me a feeling of, of the Christmas spirit uh, when we hear the scriptures of God, right? If shepherds are important to God, then we are, if, God, if shepherds are important to, to God, then we are also important too, Amen. God loves the common people and God loves us. Hallelujah. Amen. I should get an amen on that. Amen. amen. Now turn to the other fair familiar scriptures in, in Matthew chapter 2. Everyone knows this one, beginning with verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. See the difference, brothers, is an attitude of gratitude, of seeking the king to worship. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, right? He was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Right? It's talking about the, 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 the biblical scriptures in the Old Testament. And and thou, and this, and they say, and this is what is written, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Amen? Then Herod, once he listened to this, right? Then Herod, when he had privately call, called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star happened. And he sent them to Bethlehem. 
and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again. That I may come and worship him also. When they heard, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. In other words, when it goes before them, it was right in front of them, right? They were able to see it. Went before them till it came and stood over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Why? Because they, want, they were wanting to seek the king to worship him. Amen? So they had joy in their hearts. Much like Christmas, you bring joy in our hearts. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. What kind of gifts? It says gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. They took another path, right? Because God, through a dream, revealed to them that they were in danger, that Herod was going to be after them, right? So, so God, so they went in, they, when they, the, the next, the, so what they did is they left and they took a different path, right, to go back to their country. The story of the wise men is also a story of love and of worship and adoration towards Jesus Christ, right, the coming king. They represented the aristocracy of the time, the rich, the educated, the learned. And they are, and they are valuable to God too. Why else do you think God used them for this purpose? Whenever we think of the shepherds and the wise men, we invariably see scenes of love and joy and worship. Amen? But when we think of King Herod, we see darkness and hatred and death. In verse 16 of Matthew, amen? The book of Matthew, chapter 2. In verse 16 of, of 16, in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 2, we read this terrible statement that says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, he was angry, and sent forth and gave the order and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years of old and under. And according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Amen? Now why do people react like Herod did? Why are some people filled with love and happiness while others are filled with darkness and despair? I think we can learn something, brothers and sisters, but that as we look again at what these scriptures tells us about the shepherds and the wise men and Herod. Maybe through it all, Christmas will mean even more to each and, each and every one of us. Amen. First of all, I think that God chose to announce to the shepherds and the wise men the wonderful news of the coming of Jesus because they were prepared for that event. Amen. Their hearts were prepared for that event. Amen. Are you, is your heart prepared for Christmas? Amen. Or is your heart unprepared like hair? Amen. Somehow the soil of their souls had been plowed and made ready for the planting of this glorious news. Who understood the idea of sacrifice better than the shepherds? Amen. Do you realize how close Bethlehem is to Jerusalem? They're just a few miles apart, separated by only by hills on which shepherds raise their sheep. Give me a little historical background here. Amen. History tells us that many of the sheep raised in those hills between Jerusalem and Bethlehem were raised specifically to be used as sacrifices in the temple at Jerusalem. Amen. 
You see, once a year, every Jewish family was supposed to come to Jerusalem and offer sacrifices in the temple for their sins. And the animal that they sacrificed was generally a lamb, a young lamb to be exact. They didn't bring a sacrificial lamb along on the, on the long journey from their uh, homes to Jerusalem. Instead, they waited until they got to Jerusalem and then bought a lamb there to use as a sacrifice. So these shepherds knew about the sacrifice. They knew about sacrifice. They spent their lives on the hills outside of Bethlehem watching little lambs born. Watching them grow to maturity and realizing that someday a priest would come and buy them and take them back to the temple to offer as sacrifices for the sins of the people. Lamb, doesn't that remind you of anyone? Amen? The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Amen? They realized that sin was so awful in God's sight that it required a shedding of blood and a giving of life. Amen? So how appropriate that these shepherds should be the first to hear about the Lamb of God who would, who would be the Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen? They were ready for that. Right? Because they knew about what the lamb was supposed to be used for. So they understood that their hearts were prepared for that. Their minds were uncomplicated. They were not great theologians. They didn't think of reasons not to believe. They were simple people. They just believed. Their hearts and their souls were ready. And when God spoke through the angels, they listened and accepted the news with great joy. The wise men were also prepared. Evidently, they had studied the great prophets of Israel. It's pretty evident. Undoubtedly, they came from the area where Daniel the prophet has such great influence and power. Did they have some? Did they have some of the prophecies of Daniel that we don't know anything about today? I don't know. But somehow they were waiting and hoping. And when they saw that bright light, amen, hallelujah, that shining star, they knew it meant something special. There was something special about that star. There was something special about that light that was above where the child of God was. They knew something was happening. They knew something great and glorious was happening. So they went to see that light, that star, with great joy. And they wanted to, and they knew the scriptures that a new king was to be born. They recalled all the things that they had learned and they were ready to make their journey. Because they knew the star meant something that somewhere a king had been born and they wanted to worship him. You see, their minds and their hearts were prepared to worship God. Is your heart prepared to worship God in Christmas? Amen? <coughs> Praise the Lord. They were prepared and ready for Christmas. But King Herod wasn't ready. Amen? Have you ever wondered why Herod did, didn't see that star? Did you ever wonder that? I always wonder that. If, if it was bright enough for the wise men to see it in a far country, it was bright enough for Herod to see it too. Right? Logically, you would think that. Right? Why didn't Herod hear the announcement of the angels? Don't you think that will sound pretty loud? Right? Heavenly hosts, heavenly angels, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the child of God born in Bethlehem? Why didn't he see the heavens light up on that first Christmas night? He could have seen it. He could have heard it. But he didn't have the eyes to see it, nor the ears to hear brothers and sisters. A lot of times that's what happens when it comes to faith in God. Many people don't have the ears to hear, amen, or the, or the eyes to see 
the, the, that Jesus Christ is right in front of them. They just can't, they just won't believe. Christmas came to Herod as surely as it came to the wise men and the shepherds. But Herod didn't know it because Herod was not prepared. Amen. Often here Jesus Christ says when he says a parable, let him who has the ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling to the churches. You see, our eyes and our hearts and our ears have to be spiritually ready and open to receive the gospel and the word of God. Our ears have to be prepared and spiritually speaking to hear the message of God so therefore our faith can grow. Amen? We have to have the spiritual eyes to see what's going on in this world right now. When we know that it, it's God without a doubt. And our hearts have to be prepared, spiritually speaking, to perceive and to accept the message of the gospel, the message of God and Jesus Christ. Amen? Herod here was not prepared. His heart was not prepared. His eyes were not prepared. His ears were not prepared to hear the message of the angels or to even see the angels light up in the sky on Christmas night. But the wise men saw it from afar. The shepherds were prepared to accept it and believe. Amen? You see, if we resist him... If we ignore what God has done through Jesus Christ, then Christmas will come on December 25th, as it always does, but it will mean almost nothing to us because our hearts are cold and insensitive to what God is trying to do in our lives, in your lives, in your situation. <coughs> Christmas is almost here. Are you prepared? Is your heart soft? Are your ears sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to the message of God this morning? Can you hear God telling you of His love for you? Can, do you perceive in your heart that God loves you and He wants to redeem you? He wants to save you. He wants to send you a message of God, of Jesus Christ that came to save you. He died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for you. That's why Christmas is all about. God loved so lo God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, God the Father gave His Son as good news of the gospel, so that He can die on the cross, be risen from the dead, and give us victory over sin and death. Hallelujah. Can you hear God telling you of his love for you? That's the beauty of Christmas, brothers and sisters. That's why Christ is so beautiful in his meekness and, and, his, and his birth is so light. It is beautiful. It is something that many people need right now. They're going through trials and tribulations. They're going through depression and anxiety. Lord, don't you know that you can come to Christ and he will lighten your burden and you can learn of his bigness and he can take away this, your situation and if you cast your cares towards him? Secondly, when they heard the message, the wise men and the shepherds were willing to step out and take a journey of faith, but I heard. Amen? I love the words of the shepherds this morning, brothers. So shortly after the angels were went back into heaven, they said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. See, it's about how they perceived their hearts were prepared to see this thing so they can worship him, so they can acknowledge him, and so they can tell others of the good news of the gospel. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. They didn't say, let's go to Bethlehem and see if this thing is really true. Oh, they already believed. They just wanted to go and confirm what they already believed. 
Hallelujah. They had no doubt in their hearts. They were simple people, simple-minded, and they just simply believed. They believed the message of God because they had the spiritual ears to hear. They had the spiritual eyes to see that this was, in fact, good news. They didn't question the message of God. And often and not because we go through trials and tribulations because of situations that we go through, we tend to question the message of God. They didn't question the announcement of the angels. They didn't sit around and think about all the impossibilities and how humanly speaking it didn't make any sense. How can we rationalize around, around the things of God? We just need to believe. We just need to believe and have faith in that what God is trying to tell us is true. Amen? No, they just rushed to Bethlehem to see the baby. They couldn't wait to see the child king. Hallelujah. Can you imagine yourself being that shepherd? You just can't wait to run towards to see this thing that the God had told you that has come and was born. Hallelujah. It was a journey of faith for them. Amen. It was faith that gave them the joy to go seek and find this king. How about the wise men? Have you ever put yourself in their place? Amen. Can't you see them standing out in front of the yards, getting their camels ready for the long journey? They're loading up their saddlebags with food and clothing, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Can you see this? Just then, some neighbors walk by and ask, what are you doing? The wise woman replied, we're getting ready to take a trip. Where are you going? Well, we're not sure. Do you have a map? No, we're going to follow the star. Hallelujah. A lot of times we just need to follow the light of Jesus Christ no matter what. Hallelujah. We just got to have the faith to follow the light, to follow that star, to follow Jesus into our lives. Hallelujah. Because no one coming to Jesus unless the Father who sent him draws him. There's only one way to the Father, and that is through the light, hallelujah, of this world, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. They just wanted to follow the light. <laughs> Hallelujah. They just wanted to follow the light. Not the darkness. There's people out there following after the darkness. But we are children of the light. And we follow the light. And that's what they were doing. The wise men following the light of Christ. Hallelujah. We're following the light. They're following the star. Oh, but what, but what are you going to, to find when you get there? Where we are going to find a king. Hallelujah. At the end of that night, we find Jesus, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the savior of the world. I want to find the king because he is the light. He is the savior. Amen. What's the king's name? We don't know. All we know is that we have seen his star and we're going to follow it until it leads us to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the only thing that matters, brothers and sisters. We follow the light. We follow the king. Until we get to see him. Until we get to be with him. And then we are going to worship him. You see, this was the heart of the wise men. And this should be the heart of the Christian. Of a believer of Jesus Christ. I want to follow the life of Christ until it leads us to him. Until it leads you to Jesus. And then we go to see him and worship him. You see, it was a journey of faith for them as well. And faith doesn't 
make sense to people who don't know the message and who don't share the faith. The people outside of us, our believers, they don't understand the message of God. They don't understand our desire to go chase after this life, this star, to be able to see him and worship him. It was a journey of faith, brothers and sisters. They had to step out into faith. And they took this journey of faith. And faith can only be explained by a heart that understands what faith is all about. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Amen. Amen. But Herod and many others, there was no faith in them. He heard the message from the wise men. The wise men came to Herod's place, palace, and asked, Where is the one who has been born of the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled. <clears throat> Where? Where is this king? I haven't heard of any king. Quickly he called together the chief priests. And they told him that the prophets had foretold that the Messiah, the Christ, would be born in Bethlehem. You know the story. Herod sent the wise men on. He had an opportunity to learn about the new king. But he didn't have the eyes of faith or the heart that believed. Do you have a heart that believes? Do you have the eyes to see? Do you have the ears to hear what Jesus Christ is trying to tell us this morning? What the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you this morning? Lord Jesus. So while the king was born only a few miles away, he was not ready to receive him because there was no faith in his heart. There was no faith in him. That is a problem, isn't it? No faith. Lack of faith. No faith in you. There's a whole lot that can't be explained. You can't explain it in a virgin birth. You can't explain a virgin birth. You can't explain the heavens lighting up and the angels announcing the birth of a king. You can't explain a mysterious star shining above. You can't explain all the drama and glory and wonder. Hallelujah. It's divine. You have to have faith to believe. It can only be understood with a heart and a mind of faith that believes. Amen. We have to be simple of heart, sincere and humble to believe a heart of faith. We can't rationalize around faith, brothers and sisters. There's, there's people out there trying to rationalize around faith, but we cannot do that. We just simply need to believe. Believe that what God says is true. That what God says will come true, will come true. Before Christmas will ever be real to us or to anyone, our journey must be a journey of faith too. Amen. We must realize that we will never completely understand the wonder of God's love, but in faith we must be ready to accept it. Hallelujah. Finally, the wise men and the shepherds were willing to pay the price and to make the sacrifice. Oh yeah, when it comes to faith and belief, there must be sacrifice. For a lot of us, it takes a sacrifice to come to church. Some of us are sick. Some of us are physically ill. But yet we make the sacrifice to come to the, to the house of God. To be here.
here hearing this message with hearts uh, open to God, with, with eyes to see, with ears to hear what God is trying to tell us this morning. Think about the shepherds when they said, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which is to come to pass. You see, they already believed, hallelujah. They believed the message of God that this king, this child king was born, the savior of the world, hallelujah. That was a major decision for them. When they went to Bethlehem, they had to leave their sheep. Everything they owned was wrapped up in the sheep. It was at night when wolves would come and attack and kill their sheep. So it took faith. They had to say, well, we, we will leave behind all that we have to seek the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And we will trust our flock to the good shepherd who will take care of them. Amen. I have always hoped that when they came back, they found all their lambs safe and sound, and that from then on, God prospered them in ways that, that, that in ways they would never even dreamed of because they were willing to place everything in God's hands. Hallelujah. The wise men paid a price too. They left behind families and businesses and all that was familiar and dear to them. They left, they left it all to follow the light, to follow the star, to travel a strange and possible dangerous journey just to pay homage to the new king and to give him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Amen. But not Herod. Herod learns about a king and quickly rushes to his throne and put his arms around and saying, where is he? He wants to cling to all that was his and his silver and gold and his power and prestige. He does not want to let it go. A lot of times people don't want to let go of their lifestyles. They don't want to let go and let God. Amen. They don't want to let go of the power and prestige and the love of money and the love for sinful practices. Hallelujah. And they don't want to let go and let God change them. They don't want to accept God. They don't want to accept Jesus. Who went, who died on the cross for them. Hallelujah. They don't want to let go. They just want to hold on like head. Oh God, help us. Let us just release the things that are destructive and accept the, the, the blessings of God. For us to follow Jesus Christ, we must pick, let, leave our lives behind. Pick up our cross and follow him. Let me say that again. For us to follow God, we must leave our past behind. Pick up our cross and follow him. Herod wants to cling to all of his. But what he says, this is mine, mine, all mine. I earned this. This is mine. He was afraid that he was going to lose it all. Does that sound familiar? Christmas means surrender. Okay? Surrender your life to Jesus. Put your past away and surrender all of it to God. Surrender to Christ. It means that the sovereign God of heaven looked down and saw us dying in our sins and said, I can't let this go on. I must do something about it. Oh, hallelujah. And God lovingly gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, amen, all it takes is believe, repent, and believe, and put your faith in Jesus Christ, and he is just and faithful to forgive of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's that simple. And yet, we make it hard because we do not want to let go. We do not want to let go. But we have to let God. He was afraid to lose it all.
And God said, I must do something about this. He surrendered his glory and his power. Speaking about Jesus. God became a baby. He walked among us. He breathed our dust. He let us persecute him and spit on him. <laughs> and drive nails into his hands and do it to his feet. That is surrender. That is surrender, brothers and sisters. Christmas means giving. Not just brightly wrapped gifts to people that we love, but giving ourselves. Did you hear that? It's not just brightly wrapped gifts to people that we love, but it's of giving up ourselves to others. Amen? Just like Jesus gave his life for others. Just like Jesus sacrificed his, his will. Hallelujah. He, he surrendered his will. You gotta understand, God, Jesus was God and fully God, the Son of God, but he surrendered his will for the Father's will. And he gave it all. He sacrificed himself for the, to the will of the Father so we may have eternal life. We must be giving of ourselves. So here we are. Some of us may be like the shepherds. We don't have much and we may not know a lot that the world considers important. But we are ready to listen to what God has to say. Amen. Our hearts are ready. Our ears are ready. Amen. To hear the word of God. Our eyes are ready to see what God is trying to do. How he is laboring through his providence in our lives. Others may be more like the wise men. Searching for the truth. Asking questions. Knowing his promise that if we will seek the truth with our whole heart, that we will find him. That we will find Jesus. Amen. And the wise men did. Have you sought God? Have you found God? Have you found that Jesus Christ loves you? Have you found that God the Father sent his son to die on the cross because he loves you? Have you found that the Holy Spirit wants to lead you into all truth? Remember, it is God that does not lead us into lies. Because Satan is the one that leads us to lies. It is the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth. Amen. Because God is truth. And Satan is a liar. And the father of it. Unfortunately, there are many like Herod who are antagonistic towards God. Lord have mercy. May God have mercy on this world. I've heard so many on the news, many people, news anchors, hallelujah, with pure hatred towards the gospel, pure hatred towards God. I pray for them that God will reach, uh, hallelujah. I am not, have no doubt that God's hand is not too short to reach those that hate Him. I pray that God reaches them for the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they may repent and seek God's forgiveness. There's antagonism towards Christ. There's antagonism towards God's people. Have you, are you not paying attention to the, the, uh, the flat out anti-Semitism and antagonism against God's people, Israel? Many young people, they've been indoctrinated with this, with this anti-Semitism and hatred towards the people of God, the, the apple of his eye, Israel. And notice this, us Gentiles that are believers in Jesus Christ, we, are, we were grafted in to the family of God as well. We are, we are also spiritually Israel as well. So the Jewish people that don't know Jesus Christ right now, that one day will, the 114,000, amen, and the many are Jewish Messianic Jews right now, we are gonna, they're going to be our brothers and sisters of Christ. They are God's people and so are we. And there's been so much anti-Semitism, right? And antagonism against God's people, Israel, and Christians as well. 
All these protests, brothers and sisters, is an antagonism against God. Put it in his face, fist up high, saying, I'm for the murder of your people. These aren't pro-Palestinian protests. These are pro-Hamas terrorism protests. There's so much hate rather than love for him. And will not receive what God wants to give. I pray for those young people that have been indoctrinated for them to receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And every year at Christmas time, this great line is drawn. <clears throat> Here are people who are like the shepherds and the wise men coming to Jesus to worship him. Amen? That should be us. That should be the believers of Jesus Christ. We come to church to seek God, to worship Him. Amen. Amen. And there are people like Herod who stand hard and cold, resisting all that God is trying to do in their lives. That's what in Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul talks about that everything has been revealed in, in, in creation so that there will be no excuse that there is no God, but yet they still reject Him. People would rather make themselves uh, 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 God, uh, make themselves gods from His creation than, than to uh, acknowledge Him as God and creator of the universe. There's no excuse, brothers and sisters. God is everywhere. Amen. God is evident throughout the universe and all creation. And, 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 and on top of that, Sister Mary Lou, look at her. She's been created in the image of God and His likeness. In her is, is manifest God. In her, God has been manifested through her because we, in her we see God's creation. We see God's handiwork. Amen. When we look at another human being, that's evidence that God exists. Lord. When we see a tree or the, or the stars, there's, that's evidence of God. But yet there's people out there with cold hearts that are, that are they're hardened, resisting all that God is trying to do in their lives and rejecting everything that He created. And to which category do you fall? Amen? And to which category do you fall? Who best represents you? You see, God wants to take all the hairs of the world and make them into shepherds and wise men. Don't, don't get me wrong. I pray for those people. I pray for those who are antagonistic towards God, against God's people. I pray for them to reach repentance and forgiveness and eternal life. That is my pastoral heart for them. Amen. I pray for them. I pray for today's young people to step out of that indoctrination and realize that there is a God that loves them. There is a God, creator of the heavens and earth. Hallelujah. That wants to save them. That wants to forgive them. But that can only happen when you are willing for it to happen. Amen. Did you hear that? When you are prepared to receive his message. When you are willing to make that journey of faith. When you are willing to surrender to him. That's how. The invitation is extended this morning, brothers and sisters. And God invites you to come to his manger, hallelujah. To come to his throne of grace. To come to his cross where he died, hallelujah. And to know of his love. Hallelujah. To know of his love. As we stand and pray to God in the universe, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite you to come. We invite those that are on Facebook Live that, we will, that later on will listen. We, I invite you, God invites you to come right now to the God of the universe, the one who created you. Don't you know that you've been created in the image of God, in his likeness, which means you have worth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to understand, it does not matter what you have done. You have worth because you were worth dying for. You and I, when we were in our sins, we were worth dying for. Because God loved us so much that 
that he was willing to give his glory, hallelujah, and come to the earth and, and willing to, to, sub, to submit to God, to the Father's glory and will to die on the cross for you. You were worth it all. You were worth his sacrifice because he loves us. Amen. Would you come to Christ today? I would like to open up the altar prayer this morning. Let us please stand. I would like to break. I would like to open the altar prayer this morning. Whoever wants to come to the throne of grace, Amen. To whoever that's listening to this message this morning, would you come to Christ? Would you come to the to the throne of God? Would you come to Christ and His cross? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory and praise this morning, Father. We thank you, Father, for your glorious grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. We come to you, Father, and we're re uh, repentant, Father, of our sins. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you, Father, to, to, uh, to, to repent of our sins and seek your forgiveness, Father. I pray, oh God, that we be people that seek after you, Father, to for us to be people like the shepherds, Father, ready, with hearts ready to, to see the King of God, hallelujah, to see the King child, to see King Jesus, hallelujah. Father, let us be like the wise men, hallelujah, that couldn't wait to see and chase after that light, which is Jesus Christ the Lord, and to worship Him. Let us come to the house of God to worship God, hallelujah. Let us come to Christ to repent of our sins and seek his, his forgiveness for our sins. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that this morning that people may be saved, that people will be repenting, that people will be uh, forgiven of their sins and seeking your forgiveness, oh God. Hallelujah. I pray for our loved ones, for those, for the young people that I was talking about, for those that are, that are protesting, hallelujah, against God's people. I pray for their repentance. I pray that they be saved. I pray they know who God is, that God loves them, even though they're antagonistic to God. They also were work were worthy to die for. Hallelujah. That's how God saw us. He saw he he, he may be a sinner, but, uh, but you are worthy of me dying and sacrificing my life for you. So you may have eternal life. Hallelujah. Father, Father, let us have hearts that are ready. Let us have ears to hear. Let us have eyes to see. Let us heart. Let us have hearts prepared. Hallelujah. For the message of the gospel. Hallelujah. For the message of God this morning. To have joy in our hearts. Hallelujah. The hearts that are repentant of our sins. Seeking God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. Let us have a genuine heart, oh God. In Jesus' name, we give you grace. We give you glory, oh Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, oh Father. In Jesus' name, for everything that you are doing and have done in our lives, oh God. I pray for the salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. I pray that those of us have backslid to be restored back to you, Father. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those that have been struggling in their and their uh, anxieties that have been struggling and their depressions, Father. They're they are mourning, Father, right now. They are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Hallelujah. I pray that to let you know that God is with you, that God has not forgotten about you, that God who is the one that will give you peace and will give you joy, even in these difficult times of Christmas. Hallelujah. All you got to do is come to him. All you got to do is go to Jesus. Hallelujah. All you got to do is go to the Holy Ghost and, and for Him to comfort you and strengthen you. Hallelujah. And to lead you and to lead us into all truth. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, for your glory to be manifested, Father, this morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory, Lord Father, this morning for your Son, Jesus, who came to the earth that left His, his heavenly and glorious throne to be with us, to shed and die, to shed His blood, to die on the cross. To bring the teachings and the good news for the healing and deliverances that he performed, hallelujah, while he was on earth. And to die on the cross and be risen on the third day so that we may be saved, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for that, hallelujah, because you loved us so much that you gave your son, hallelujah. You gave your son this Christmas and you gave him, hallelujah, on that day when he died on the cross and was risen from the dead. You gave him for that because you so loved us, hallelujah. You so loved those, hallelujah. Now feel that their sins are impossible to forgive. I want to let you know that God can forgive those 
sins that you think are impossible for God to forgive. God's hand is not too short to reach you and to save you and to rescue you. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise and we give you glory this morning, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I give you thanks. I give you thanks for listening this morning. I pray that you will be, that I pray that, we, that you have a good Christmas. Uh, those that are listening on Facebook Live, we will see you uh, next time around. May God be with you. Do not, do not fear. God is with us. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. I pray for you. God bless you. We will see you next time here on Mr. Church. I promise you. God bless you. Bye.